It's Monday, and that means it's time for a new episode of Interviewing People, a career cast where you can learn about a variety of careers from people actually doing the work. Today I'll be talking with Holly Kendrick, who once walked these halls and is now a civil engineer and project manager for the Whiting Turner Contracting Company. Holly will be sharing about her journey to becoming a civil engineer and much more. So enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Interviewing People Career Cast. And today we have Van Buren graduate Holly Kendrick with us, and she's going to be talking about her career as a civil engineer. She works for the Whiting Turner Contracting Company, and she's going to talk a little bit about her time at Ohio State, studying to be a civil engineer, and then moving into the workforce. So thank you very much, Holly, for joining us today. And I'd love to hear you just talk a little bit about how you ended up in civil engineering. Is that something you'd always planned on, or is that something that kind of fell into your lap, maybe once you were in college, so forth? Sure. So um, engineering, I was in high school, and I'm like trying to figure out how how I'm supposed to know what I want to do the rest of my life. I'm only 18. What, what do I want to do the rest of my life? Well, I focused on my strong suits, math and science. And um, Mr. Rader was uh, my high school math teacher. And he's like, you're a great problem solver. Engineering is right up your alley. I think you'd be great at it. So um, from there, I started applying to schools. I found the best ones in state um, for engineering. Ohio State and Toledo were the two that I applied to, Ohio State being my number one choice. Once accepted, I enrolled in the College of Engineering, um, and I had initially intended to go into mechanical engineering, actually. Um, I thought, man, what do I love? Roller coasters, theme parks. I would love to design a roller coaster. How (laughs) cool would that be? Um, So from there, I started just taking core engineering classes, um, and I actually found my strong suit to be the statics classes. And so I started focusing... um, more into civil engineering rather than mechanical. Um, And that's kind of how I found my niche was actually in the College of Engineering and just starting to take classes of all all sorts. Um, You know, I thought maybe material science engineering would be cool. I I didn't really enjoy my chemistry classes. So my statics classes were where I kind of leaned toward civil engineering. Um, And then from there, uh, applied to the civil engineering um, college and then in the College of Engineering, there's actually three, three focuses. Um, you can do construction, you can do structural, and then you can also do environmental. Um, I really, really enjoyed my structural classes, and I thought that that's what I wanted to do. Um, I took mainly those classes. I started to look for internships in the summer when I wasn't taking courses. And I think this is probably the biggest tip I can give you is to get the experiences and what you think you want to do before you graduate and become full time in a position that you want to be in. So I had a job at Peterman Associates, um, actually in Findlay on Main Street. Mm -hmm. Um, And with that design group, I was sitting behind a desk all day, um, you know, working on a computer, not really working with other people. And it just kind of really wasn't me. So after that internship, Um, I started focusing more on the construction classes in school. And from there, I got an internship the next summer with Honda Manufacturing um, with their facilities department. And we did a 12 sequence um, steel erection for um, just in addition to their factory. So um, I got the experience and kind of leg in the into construction there really enjoyed that. I did not like working for Honda, but I did know that I found out that I like working in the construction field. So um, from there, I started focusing on construction in school and went to career fairs and found my job with Whiting Turner, where I am now. So So some of the things you talked about there, statics classes, I have no idea what that is. So um, you've got statics, dynamics. So it's a lot of math. You're learning um, just building elements. Um, so think of just like a steel column and how, how that reacts with another steel column that it's connected to. So we can't just stick a steel column in the ground and say, Hey, this thing's going to last for the next hundred years and everyone will be safe. (laughs) (laughs) Correct. So yeah. Um, you know, reinforced concrete would be another, um, class, just things 
things of the sort of construction and um, statics versus dynamics, so things not in motion. So I didn't enjoy mechanical engineering classes where they talked about gears and learning how things were moving okay. as pieces and parts. Okay. Now, you talked about, I mean, there's a lot of engineering options. Uh, can you maybe name some of the, the the various options that are at Ohio State within the engineering department? So civil engineer is one, mechanical engineer. What are some others? There's chemical engineering, uh, material science engineering. There's the FABI, uh, food agricultural biological engineering. Um, there's so many different options. Um, just kind of depends on what your your niche is. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you know, I think a lot of people think, oh, I want to be an engineer, but there are just so many different aspects of that. And I loved your advice to get that experience. And I think you have a similar experience to most people that you have that first experience and you maybe realize, oh, this isn't what I thought it was. And then that leads you to where you eventually end up. So um, as far as you talked a little bit about uh, math, that you're using a lot of that. I, you know, when we were communicating previously, you talked about there are times where you write 50 page contracts and so forth. Can you talk a little bit more about, you know, the math that you do, the writing that you do? Are there other high school classes that you found to be very useful to you now that you are in your career? Absolutely. So obviously English wasn't my strong suit, but I still enjoyed it. Um, and I write every day, um, communicating with people. And like you said, I write contracts as working for a contracting company, we subcontract out all of the work. So I write these 50 page documents, sometimes even longer, um, legally binding subcontractors to do what we need them to do. So it's very, very technical writing. Um, so where it's not a creative essay, <laughs> I am still writing very long pages, legally binding documents um you know every project that comes there's about 20 subcontractors that i write these for so very useful um learning the writing skills and, and the idea that if you i mean say something slightly differently from how it should be said that could be a million dollar mistake quite easily when you're working on these huge construction projects absolutely like i said when we were talking previously um these contracts you know they're based off a set of drawings that we interpret and we have to find in into life, you know, so we have to make sure everything is specified. They're very, very detailed documents and it sets the tone for the rest of the project. How well written these contracts are, you know, makes it very um, useful throughout the project, you know, holding a subcontractor for what they're responsible for installing in the field. So right, right. very important. Right. Now, obviously, you spend some time then writing and sitting at a desk and computer. And you also spend time on the job site. What do you do there? Absolutely. So as a project manager now, I, I do the pre-construction where we write these contracts. And then once construction starts breaking ground, you know, I'm actually on a job site every day wearing my steel-toed boots, wearing a hard hat, high-vis vest, um, and, you know, we're making sure that work is going Im implemented correctly from the drawings on the job site. So, um, you know, we're the liaison between the owner, making sure what they want is happening in the field, and liaison with the subcontractors as well. So you are, yeah, you're, you're making sure everyone stays happy, everything gets done the way it needs to get done. Sure that I'm sure that's a little bit stressful at times. Uh, what would you say is maybe the most difficult part of this career if someone would be considering becoming a civil engineer? And obviously, there's a bunch of different types of civil engineer, but uh, what might be the most difficult part of your job? So I would say time management is very crucial for what I do. Um, learning where to spend your time at in a day to make sure everything gets done. It's a very, very fast paced environment. Um, and the other thing would be being able to roll with punches. You know, people are gonna make mistakes and it's kind of like, here's this problem, how can I solve it? And just being quick on your feet to being able to solve these problems is probably the biggest tool that I do every day, okay. so. Yeah, I think that's good advice. And uh, yeah, especially for high school students to 
recognize that yet time management when teachers talk about it now it's not just because you'll only use it in high school it's going to be very important after <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah. big life skill to have right 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 so thinking about your job and, and what you do uh, can you think about a time where you have felt especially uh, happy or, or satisfied with the job that's been done or maybe you've even been recognized for um, the quality of work that was done and, and that you had a role in that. And I guess maybe tell us about that situation and what that was like to to have such a positive impact. Sure. Um, let's see. Well, right now I'm working on an emergency department, renovating an existing emergency, emergency department for Ohio Health. Um, so being able to build a facility that helps save lives is one of the most rewarding things I think I can do. Right. I'm not a doctor, but I do give them the facility that they get to use. So super rewarding. Um, quality control is one of the biggest things in construction management that we manage. Um, and I think the biggest thing to learn is to be proactive. So um, one of the things that I did for our project um, recently, since it's an existing facility, we had to map out existing mechanical features of the existing building. Um, had we not done this, we would have been connecting to the incorrect air handler based on existing drawings that we were building from. So being proactive and doing our due diligence to make sure what was existing in this facility um, saved us a bunch of time on the back end of the schedule. So um, we didn't have downtime construction, wasn't paused. So um, just being proactive about existing systems, um, this led for projects of success and um, mechanical system installation success. So there's that aspect of the project, um, you know, just being proactive in that sense. Yeah, it yeah, has to feel good to know that you saved probably a lot of people a lot of money and a lot of headaches because of doing that background work that you needed to do. So absolutely. So yeah, in, in construction, time and money are huge when yeah, it comes yeah. to making an owner happy. So. Right, right, right. So uh, the Whiting Turner Contracting Company, uh, can you tell us a little bit about that company that you work for? And is that typical? I mean, are there hundreds of companies like this across the country? that employ civil engineers? Uh, are they one of the few? Do they employ other types of engineers? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So Whiting Turner Contracting Company started in 1902, old company based out of Baltimore, Maryland, um, primarily construction management. In Baltimore, we do self-perform, but across the nation, all the way to San Diego, we have offices managing construction. Here in Ohio, our bread and butter is healthcare. Um, we do we built the Cleveland Clinic, for instance. Um, so we focus on that. We hire a lot of civil engineers just because of our background with construction within the civil engineering degree. Um, but that's not to say we don't hire industrial system engineers, um, chemical engineers, just electrical engineers. You know, just for electric going into projects. So. Definitely a lot of opportunities um, within the company to get hired. Sometimes we have just specialists on mechanical, mechanical and plumbing systems. So those those kind of engineers can also be hired. Um, Whiting Turner, we're um, definitely one of the well-known contractors in the nation. Turner's another big one in Columbus, Ohio. Here we've also got Gilbane, um, Corner Cocosing, um, but in the ENR um, registry, which is ranks construction companies, we are number two. Um, we do $9 billion in work wow. across the country. So definitely one of the biggest companies. Right. Um, but there's the bigger ones like Qit, um, but then there's also Turner. So definitely not the only company with the opportunities. Definitely a company that I'd love to work for, though. Right, so. right. So let's say there's a student who's interested in civil engineering but doesn't necessarily see him or herself working for a large company like that. Are there many opportunities with smaller companies or do civil engineers very often go out on their own and, and work independently? Uh, does that ever happen? It's 
Technically, no, not independently. I would say you could work for a smaller firm, for instance, Peterman Associates, that's an engineering firm. They hire multiple kinds of engineers there, civil, electrical, mechanical. Um, and you could work in, in the design aspect at a smaller firm like that. You wouldn't have to work for as big of a company as Whiting Turner is. So there's definitely smaller shops. Um, However, if you do go into the design side of it, you have to shadow a licensed engineer. So when you get a drawing that we're building off of, there's a stamp on it and those engineers have to be licensed, take tests every two years to be able to stamp a drawing. And you have to shadow one of those for at least so many years and then go and take your test to be certified to get that stamp. So to be a professional engineer, right. you have to follow in the footsteps of a another engineer. Okay. Okay. So. so a lot of really good information. If there was something that you can say, man, I wish I had known this when I was in high school about becoming an engineer. Uh, what would you say that might be that you know now? I would say you don't have to know exactly what you want to do. Um, know your strong suits. I like math and science, and that's what led me to engineering. Did I, I mean, I started off wanting to design roller coasters, right? But now I love what I do. Um, so I would say you'll find your niche, just find your strong suits and go, go with that route is what I would say as an engineer. Okay. All right. Well, very good, Holly. I really appreciate everything that you've shared with us. A lot of insights. Uh, like I said, I think you're our first engineer that we've that I've talked to. So if people wanted to reach out to you and ask you some more questions, in addition to LinkedIn, is there any other way they might be able to reach out to you? Um, I'm best reached by my email address. Um, so feel free to reach out. I mean, if they want to chat, I, am, I can take a call on my cell phone. Um, I'm in between projects. We're closing out this emergency department project right now. So I'm pretty available to answer any questions anyone may have. So Okay. All right. Sounds good, Holly. I greatly appreciate it. And good luck as you continue your career as a civil engineer. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for watching this interview with civil engineer and project manager Holly Kendrick. I hope you learned valuable information from her career story. And to be sure you don't miss upcoming interviews, please click subscribe so you'll know when the next episode is released. Thank you for watching. And as always, remember the best part about Mondays is interviewing people.